It released in 1985 with 23 original colorways. It can be seen on some of the most influential figures across music, sports, fashion, and pop culture still to this very day. It's one of the most searched sneakers on StockX with over 10,000 results. It's the shoe that arguably started this entire thing we know as sneaker culture, and it's a must own. Frankly, I probably wouldn't be sitting here without this shoe. What's up guys, I'm Jamie from StockX and today we're doing a StockX buyer's guide on the Air Jordan 1. The year is 1984, and the Chicago Bulls have just drafted a young prospect by the name of Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. Considered one of the top players in the 84 NBA draft, Jordan was still seen as a potential risk in the eyes of NBA teams and sneaker brands. Because while he did hit an NCAA championship winning shot, his college career didn't capture the attention of masses like, say, Larry Bird or Magic Johnson, or for that matter, Sam Bowie, drafted number two. Still, he was a talented player that showed a ton of potential, and the question was if it would actually come to fruition. Now, this might shock you as well, but Michael Jordan didn't want to sign with Nike at all. He preferred wearing the sneakers of other brands like Adidas and Converse way more. The only reason MJ even took a meeting with Nike was because his mother forced him to. She wanted him to listen to what Nike was offering, and if you need any more of a reason to listen to what your mom has to say, please come back to this moment. At that time, Nike was still fresh in the basketball scene, with their Air Force One leading the innovative charge. They didn't have the most stacked roster of basketball players either, unlike their competitors at, say, Puma or Converse. They were looking to leave a big imprint on the NBA, which was still kind of becoming a popular thing, and had to come into the ring swinging to fight for signing MJ. A lot of this is covered in the somehow Oscar-nominated 2023 movie Air, which details the story behind Nike signing MJ and the birth of the Jordan lineage, most notably through the Air Jordan 1. But what you won't find in the movie? The original Air Jordan 1 designer, Peter Moore, discovered specific details about Michael's style of play and incorporated them into the construction of the shoe. See, Jordan liked sneakers that were low to the ground so he could feel the court, and he wanted more worn-in comfort as soon as he took them out of the box. So with that in mind, Moore took extra cushioning out of the sole to improve court feel and constructed the upper in premium leather to provide as much comfort and ankle support as possible. You got it right, it's all right there. Moore added a new style of color blocking unseen to any of the previous models, introducing something new to the NBA and unique just for Michael Jordan. Because of this personalized shoe design and a request from Jordan's mother that Michael receive royalties for every sneaker released under his name, Again, always listen to your mom. She wants you to get the bag. MJ signed with Nike before his debut with the Chicago Bulls, and as they say, the rest is history. Despite the Jordan 1 dropping nearly 40 years ago and Michael not touching an NBA court as a player since 2003, shout out the Wizards, the sneaker is still highly sought after and Michael Jordan's on-court accolades and legend played a major part in the AJ1 success. See, back in the 80s and 90s, Michael Jordan wasn't just an athlete or a superstar, he was becoming a global brand. He brought the Chicago Bulls six NBA titles, won every NBA award imaginable, and was plastered all over television screens, magazine spreads, and billboards from Japan to New York to Barcelona. His literal nickname was Black Jesus, and it wasn't sarcastic. For any kid coming of age during the Jordan years, the quickest way to becoming like Mike was buying a pair of his signature sneakers. But why did the Jordan 1 become bigger than just basketball? In the mid to late 80s, there were two important cultural shifts, cable television and skateboarding. Cable TV ushered in a new golden age of commercial advertising, and Nike, with the help of their agency partner Wyden Kennedy, took full advantage of this. And then with Jordan, it was the infamous band commercial where they literally put black boxes over the shoes. This commercial positioned the shoes as so cool that the NBA didn't even want Jordan to wear them, turning them from just a cool pair to have on the court to an even cooler pair to have off the court in a true if you know you know moment. At the same time as the Jordan 1 dropped, skateboarding had begun to explode in popularity for a second time since its birth in the 70s. Thrasher magazine in the mid to late 80s became the bible for teenagers, gravitating to the style and recklessness of skate stars like Mark Gonzalez, Christian Osoy, and Steve Caballero. You know what sneakers you could see them all skating in? Air Jordan 1s. 
Because while it was designed to be a basketball shoe, the flat sole and everyday versatility of the worn and ready look made it perfect for skaters as well. Another example of how the shoe broke past just a basketball audience into something bigger and more timeless. Hence why it's been worn by cultural figures as varied as Kanye West and Kevin Hart to Jason Sudeikis and Slash from Guns N' Roses. Shout out Axl Rose. It's a shoe that started buying and styling trends across the board and even as we already mentioned, has a feature film all about its creation featuring multiple Oscar winners. The Jordan 1's cultural significance cannot be overstated or ignored. Even if you know nothing about sneakers, you'd recognize one, no pun intended. The 1's debut brought in a slew of new looks and tech for 1985 revolutionizing the idea of what a basketball sneaker could be and look like. The Air Jordan 1 merged performance with casual wear, delivering leather uppers and a slew of eye-catching colorways during its rollout. Peter Moore's original design hasn't changed much since the 1980s. High top action leather, construction capable of handling dynamic styles of play, cotton lining collar to secure the ankles when shifting, and an insole air cushioning system for more comfort to the feet. Between the spring of 1985 and fall of 1986, 20 Air Jordan 1 colorways were released in high top construction, low top construction, in an AJKO silhouette, which is a more cost-effective option for shoppers as it features less of the bells and whistles that the original AJ1 offers. The first Jordan ones to hit were the bread, Chicago, and black toe colorways. The bread colorway was the first to gain the attention of the masses on account of its somewhat fictitious band from the NBA, hence the band commercial. On the court, Michael mainly wore the Chicago and black toe Jordan ones during his first two seasons with the Chicago Bulls. The only time he donned the breads was during the 1985 NBA slam dunk contest. The other OG Jordan 1 colorways that were released during this time were the UNC's Storm Blue, Royals, Shadows, White Black, Neutral Gray, and Metallic Pack colorways. Each colorway has since been reissued in retro form since their initial debut, some not until fairly recently. Colorways that are known for their OG status like the Shadow and Royals have been retro multiple times in the last 20 years and are some of the most popular ones on StockX. The Air Jordan 1 also rolled out in a mid-top shape in 2001, further expanding the Jordan 1's storied lineage. Despite being considered by many sneakerheads as inferior to the high or low, like me, the AJ1 sports a wide breadth of colors and is one of the more affordable Jordan 1s to obtain on StockX. The Jordan 1 has no rival. It's a sneaker that started it all, and yet, even though it's almost 40 years old and Michael hasn't touched the court, it continues to be the vanguard of sneaker fashion. Thankfully for buyers, there's a wide range of AJ1s to choose from, catering to a range of personal styles and budgets. Over 1,500 different Jordan 1s regularly trade on StockX, representing countless varieties of colorways, sizing, and price points. For the discerning collector or investor, Jordan 1 highs and OG colorways are an essential part of any collection. For budget-conscious buyers looking for cheaper entry-level Jordan 1 prices, the mid silhouette offers an attractive alternative. And for the cultural connoisseurs, there are high-profile collaborations galore, from Travis Scott to Alele May to Jay Balvin. These collaborations tend to be some of the more expensive sneakers on StockX entirely, with the Air Jordan 1 Dior High, a first-of-its-kind collab between Jordan Brand and the Parisian luxury fashion house, currently being the most expensive Jordan 1 in recent years, with the last sale clocking closer to $9,000 US dollars. As mentioned before, the Jordan 1 Mid leans more on the affordable side for most of its colorways, and it's a great entry for more people eager to start their Jordan 1 collection. And some popular Jordan 1 colorways like the Chicago and Brett also appear on the Mid. These prices tend to be significantly cheaper than their high top counterparts, with lowest ass ranging from $92 to $130. Make no mistake, the Air Jordan 1 story is far from over, even after Michael's first and second NBA retirement. The sneaker continues to take on new life, with the next generation of sneakerheads seeing multiple drops with new storylines and reimaginings of legend each and every year, making it as relevant now as it was in 1985. So what are you waiting for? Seriously, you've watched this entire video, listen to me, yep, go shop right now. Go on StockX, get a pair of your own, and start your sneaker story today.